Hey guys, welcome back to a new video in which I will show you five Android tips that I actually wish I would have known earlier. These are basically tips when I heard these the first time, I was like, wow, that is so cool. Why didn't someone actually tell me that earlier? So now I'll share these five tips with you. So lean back and enjoy. And number one is actually that you can get your navigation arguments in saved state handle in your VM models. So if we actually take a quick look here in Android Studio, this is actually a project I'm building in my regular Twitch live streams, which you can essentially also see if you join down here on this little join button, then you see all the recordings of all my Twitch live streams in which we will build a social network essentially in Jetpack Compose, or you just see my Twitch live streams every Monday. However, here I'm having this post detail view model. So it's a detail screen. It just describes a specific post in our social network. And you can see if we use Hilt, we can inject the saved state handle here. We really don't need to do anything else. We don't need to provide this. We don't need to have this anywhere else and pass it to our view model. No, Hilt will do all of that for us. That's the one part about this. This saved state handle now contains our navigation arguments. So if I scroll down a little bit here, you see we can get a string out of it that I call post ID. So when I actually navigate from our post list to this post detail page, we pass the post ID of the post we actually clicked on as a navigation argument. And we can directly now get this in our view model by using our saved state handle. And in the past, I actually always had like a function here, um, get post or so where we pass the post ID. And then I simply pull that function from our UI in on view created in Jetpack Compose, like in a launched effect block or so, which is not cool because that is fired every single time you rotate your device. However, if you do that in the init block of the view model by using the safe state handle, you get it pretty much instantly in the view model, which is pretty cool and especially very helpful for these kinds of detail screens, which you have very often in Android apps. To give you a little bit more background about the safe state handle, it's not just used to save navigation arguments, it's also used to basically restore your view model state. Yes, also your view model can lose its state when there is a process death happening. So when the Android system kills your Android app, then you can use the safe state handle to actually restore the state to prevent that your app actually has some kind of weird states, but that would be a little bit too much for this video. Let's actually get to number two of the tips I want to give you here, and of the biggest realizations I actually had in regards to Android, and that is that if you use a foreground service, the logic you actually want to be executed in the background does not need to be in the foreground service. Um, many of you will probably already know that, but for those of you who don't know that, well, a foreground service, like the, the class itself, really only needs to contain how it displays the uh, notification and that it receives some kind of commands that you actually want to send from the background. But let's say you want to keep a video call active in the background and you do that with a foreground service, which is a totally valid way to do that, which is the right way to do that, then that does not mean that you have to put your video call logic in the foreground service. No, you can just put that in a separate class, which is a singleton, and then, yeah, that singleton will survive. So classes aren't just killed, just like activities or so. Like activities and fragments have a life cycle, but normal classes don't have that, and that is something I understood way too late. So every instance you create that is essentially a singleton will survive your whole application's lifetime. It will only be cleaned up if your application is actually finished at some point is actually quit. And if you have a foreground service, then by doing that, you prevent your app from getting killed by the Android system. So that way you can essentially just keep your foreground service classes very clean and just don't put that much code in it because otherwise it will quickly get very, very messy. Let's actually get to number three and that is be flexible with your architecture. I see so many people who are so super strict when it comes to choosing a specific architecture for their project, when it comes to sticking to clean architecture guidelines, and all that stuff is good. Like, there is a reason why we have MVVM, why we have clean architecture, why we have MVI. 
that that all makes sense but i still want to encourage you to actually be flexible with that and don't follow an architecture just for the sake of following it i should rather say don't follow an architectural paradigm just for the sake of following it so i, I always recommend to use an architecture but let me give you an example if you use clean architecture in your project and your project is just not very big then for most projects in architecture is actually way too overkill so if you realize for your project if you use use cases that just introduces a lot more boilerplate code because they don't contain that much code then it's totally fine not to use them like the goal of choosing an architectural paradigm should be to assist you in coding to separate your concerns well and to also make your code testable but if you can also achieve that goal by leaving away a specific part of an architectural paradigm and that is totally fine. And especially when you are a beginner in terms of coding and you just work on your hobby projects, then I think it's really not so important to stick to, 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 stick to software architecture because as a beginner, you should really focus on just building projects and enjoying the process. If you don't enjoy learning, then you will sooner or later quit. Of course, when you feel like now is the time to learn a software architecture, then that totally makes sense. And for like production level apps, you should always use that. But if you're a beginner and you feel totally overwhelmed by all these new concepts, dependency injection, MVVM, I don't know, Dagger, then it's totally fine to leave out these concepts and just focus on building a project that you enjoy and that actually does something that's so much more important and will contribute so much more to your learning than just trying to make everything perfect right away let's get to number four of the things that i actually also learned way too late and that is that you can actually create your very own live templates for android studio and i also have a very cool video about where i show my favorite live templates if you are interested in that you can simply click up here or if you want to learn these tricks and tips that I actually also share here on YouTube, but just some exclusive ones that I don't share here, then you also would like to subscribe to my weekly email newsletter, simply going down here in the description. And you just need to enter your email, rest is free. You just receive weekly emails with exclusive Android tips. In regards to these live templates, for example, as you can see here, one that I created is Hilt VM model. So I just need to type Hilt VM, press enter, and it will generate all the boilerplate code for me to basically create a VM model in which I can inject dependencies using Dagger Hilt. It automatically imports all the annotations here, the inject annotation, like the VM model constructor. All that is automatically done, and I just need to fill in the gaps, like my VM model, and I have some kind of parameter here. And then I'm ready to write my view model. That's so much quicker, especially for things you actually need to do so frequently, like creating view models. And yeah, you can just become very creative with that. You can create these live templates for pretty much anything just in the Android settings, pressing Control, Alt and S to open these. And then you probably can just search for live templates um, here under editor, live templates. And then you have a bunch of templates. There are a ton coming already with Android Studio by default, but you can simply create new ones. If you want to learn that, then simply check the video I just linked to. Let's get to the last tip, tip number five, and that is when something is deprecated, you can very often find the replacement for that by just reading the documentation. And I'm not saying read the documentation in your browser, I'm saying you should read the documentation in your IDE because Android Studio already contains that. Like, let's go up here. I don't know. Um, I probably don't have a very good example here. But let's say you write a function here after the shared flow and you see we have a ton of deprecated functions. Um, yeah, let's say, let's pick one, maybe like, I think it's, yeah, concat map, which is deprecated then you want to now know, okay, what is the replacement for that? Then you simply put the cursor on that, press Control Q, and then this pop-up window will open up. It will tell you basically how this function works, if there is a documentation written for this function. And very often, not always, but very often, it tells you the replacement for a specific deprecated function. Exactly like here. This is the flow analog of Concat Map. Oh no, the flow analog of concat map is flat map concat. So that's the replacement. 
And if we search for that, flat map concat, ooh, we have a function that does the same, which is not deprecated. So that is something that is very handy and that I think not too many people actually take a look at when things are deprecated, just considering the amount of comments I get uh, that are related to deprecated things. In the end, just by searching, you can usually find these pretty quickly just what the replacement for something would be. Are you actually a beginner in Android development and you would like to know how I would approach this if I was to start with Android again, then you actually want to check this video where I show you exactly that.